Hello, everybody. It's me. It's Stuart Martha. I'm back. Uh, remember, I am a husband. I am a father, as you can see by my red dad shirt. I'm a teacher and a friend. Now, it's actually Father's Day this weekend, this coming up, which is why I'm sporting the dad shirt here for us, as opposed to my, my normal ensemble of my nice buttoned-up shirt. Um, I'm, I'm just very relaxed today. Very relaxed. Uh, <clears throat> so today, for the show, I have, of course, a theater theaterish song I'm going to sing for you. I have my dad jokes. Uh, I'm going to teach you a fun way to fold hoodies today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the kids being home a lot this summer. We're going to review my three C's to behavior management. And then I'll read a little bit about cleaning tips, specifically about windows and doors. Oh, fun. Okay, so we'll jump right into it. The song I'm singing today is called I Loved You Too Much. It's written by Drew Gasparini. Um, I usually say his last name wrong. And this dude, he started reading when, writing music when he was 12. He's a performer and a, and a writer, producer. Um, he toured with Jason Mraz, Third Eye Blind, Plain White Tees. He's written the music scores for um, It's Kind of a Funny Story, Skittles Commercial, The Karate Kid, Whipping Boy, Night Shift, and Crazy Like Me. Those are all Broadway musicals. Um, this particular song, I Loved You Too Much, is from his album called I Could Use a Drink, which I'm going to take a drink of right now. Mm. Uh, it's just a collection of songs he wrote, theater-like songs that he wrote, and some of the best of Broadway are on here singing. There's Jeremy Jordan, Rachel Porter, Alex Weiss, just to name a few of them. This song, I Loved You Too Much, is actually sang by Mikhail Kilgore. Uh, I recommend you going online and hearing him sing it, because he's going to do a far better job than I can. And the reason why, this song is written for like a tenor tenor, like a tenor tenor that can sing really high. I'm like a baritone tenor. So I can hit some notes, but not many of them. And, and you'll see that. So really go online and, and hear this song. So here we go. I'm going <clears> to <throat> sing the very beginning of the song. This is like a really heartbreaking song where they just, they get broken up with. So um, let's see how it goes. Okay. <clears throat> I got to get sad. It's a sad song. So that's it. It's over. You're gonna just up and go. Don't give me that look like I should feel sorry for you. Cause you can just carry on. But you don't know. You don't know how this hit me. It's like I get what you're saying, but that won't make it easier. Cause words don't cushion falls. I'm already broken. So off you go, off you go. You've had enough, you've given up on me. Show me up, cause you think you know better. True enough, I may have lost my touch. But you say that you're leaving. Because I loved you too much. You know, I think the hardest part is, is knowing that you loved me first Before I even saw or made sense of us Still off you go, off you go had enough, you've given up on me. Show me up, cause you think you knew better. And true enough, I may have lost my touch. But you say that you're leaving. Because I loved you too much. Alright, there's more. I know it gets to the really high part, but I'm going to stop at that. 
such a pretty song, right? Right? It's a good song. So I got my dad jokes. Perfect, because it's, you know, dad time. So here, a dad walks into a lumber yard to buy some two by fours for a deck. The clerk says, okay, how long do you need these for? Or how long do you need them? And the dad says, well, a pretty long time. <laughs> yeah, okay, here's another one. A three-legged dog, poor dog, walks into a bar. And guess what he says to the bartender? I'm looking for the man who shot my paw. <laughs> Pause like a dad. And paw. It, okay. Okay, so we're going to fold some hoodies. So I got this hoodie here. Uh, my, my son actually showed me this. Puts the hoodies like this. They're all together in like a little great for traveling and just good to have them like in a nice little group here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera down so you can check out my table here where I have a small hoodie. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to spread it out upside down here. I'm going to fold this up like into thirds. One, two, so there's like three sections there. Then I'm going to fold the arms across here. Like that. And then I'm going to fold the sides in so they match up with the hoodie area here. So I'm going to fold that here, that here. And now, now, now this is where the magic starts. Here, see this? You flip it inside here and you invert the hood over everything. And boom, it's just a sweet, nice way to fold them all together. This got a big hood on it. All right, you can, a lot of times you can see the design on the shirt really well too, which is really nice. And the hood's not just flapping around. You can tuck the uh, strings inside here. I don't have any with strings in these particular ones I showed. I chose my younger son's small ones because they are easier to work with. So great way, rewind that, watch it again. It is such a great way to fold your stuff. So. Kids are home now because it's summer, you know, so the kids are around more and that can be challenging. So I wanted to let you know there's a few things you can do as a parent. I've talked about this before on the Stuart Martha Show. Um, you got to remember the three C's. The first C is to be clear. Make sure your expectations are clear to them and they understand what they can and cannot do. Make sure it's clear. Clarify with them as needed, but make sure it's clear and put it in a way they understand it. The next one is to be consistent. If I, no, there's only three C's, but if I had to choose the most important one, it would be consistency. So you just need to be consistent with what your expectations are and also what the consequence for breaking those expectations and the consequence for meeting those expectations because there can be positive consequences as well. So make sure you're consistent on what that is and stay consistent because when you're not, that adds a lot of confusion to students and a lack of safety and peace in them to know like if if they're misbehaving and you're consistent with how you respond that's going to be much more comforting than the like ooh, i don't know how they're going to respond and that and that can add a lot of anxiety you don't want to do that which leads me to the third c comforting all right empathize with your kids even when you're giving them their caught their negative consequence say i know that this stinks i know that it is not fun to have to, you know, stay in your room for the next two hours or to have to lose your toys or whatever the consequences that you have um, or not get dessert. That's a bad one. I would hate that one. Um, you can empathize. Like, I know that that's hard. And empathize by, with as a parent saying, I know I don't like doing that. It's not fun for me. But you chose to do this. Therefore, this, this has to happen. What can we do next time so we don't have to do that? All right. Be comforting with them. Stick to your guns. Be consistent and stick to what you what you said you were going to do. But you can also comfort them in that moment. All right. And don't be like, oh, you're sad. Okay, I'm going to, oh, you're throwing a big enough fit. I'll let you have it or I'll let you get away with it. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, lest your children are controlling you if you do that. And that's a big problem and does not give children that security that they need. So be clear with them. Be consistent and be comforting with them. Okay, comforting and sticking to what you say you're going to do at the same time. Okay, now, one of the uh, things that I want to talk about is my grandma's book, Come and Clean. Uh, there's a bunch of tips in here that I'm going to start reading over the next few ones. I'm going to read right from page 98 in here about things to do for windows and doors, okay, to help you with cleaning. Uh it talks, this windows and doors is talking specifically about blinds. They say get vertical blinds. 
Many blinds, sadly, are, are horizontal, and those are really horrible to clean. They stink. They collect dust, dust like magnets, and they're really crappy to clean. But if you get the vertical blinds, one, they don't collect dust very, very well, and two, they're so much easier to clean. It's so much easier to start here and wipe down than it is to go across every single tiny blade. Now, I say that having vertical blinds downstairs on my main level. I mean, it is what it is. Because they're cheaper and they're easier to get. But if you're like, man, I really want to have a cleaner home or I hate cleaning, what can I do? This is an idea. Get yourself some vertical blinds, all right? Um, I'm going to look at some of the things. Oh, and with... Floor to ceiling mirrors are a real nuisance to clean. The lower part attracts fingertips. The upper part requires using a step stool or ladder every time. So if you do have those big, huge mirrors, you might want to consider not having them. Or maybe you lie them horizontally on the wall so you still have that nice depth that a mirror can give. So, man, we got through all that really fast, and I'm glad that we did. So... You got some jokes, you got a new way to fold hoodies, and you were reminded on some of the best ways to kind of care for your children, or even those three C's work with relationships as well, just so you know. All right, now that's all. That's all we have for today. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you can go out there and just be the light to those around you, all right? Thanks for tuning in. Bye.